Hello and welcome to this lip sync demonstration. Even though we're going to be doing some shape animation, there's something that I need to explain to you that is really important inside XSI. This is something that we call the construction mode. The construction mode is a way to organize effectively the operators or the deformers that you will be connecting onto a geometry. If we select Dr. Beck Bunsen in the viewport here, he's going to be assisting us for this little demonstration. If I select him, you're going to see in my explorer that the head original is the name of the geometry. It tells me that it's a polygon mesh. If I expand this where I have my construction history, you're going to see that we now have uh, placeholders. Those placeholders represent the different operations that are usually done on the geometry for creating a character. That means that every single geometry inside XSI has those four placeholders. In this case here, we've got the four of them. We've got the modeling, we've got the shape modeling, the animation, and the secondary shape ordering. Like I said, they represent what we usually do in the creation of a character. That means that usually we start by doing some modeling of the character to give it, you know, like the look that we want. Then after that, we might go under shape modeling because what we want to do is actually some lip sync or some shape uh, deformations. The other one, animation, is where the envelope will reside. When you want to deform a character using, you know, like a skeleton, you're going to be able, you know, like to place it under the animation. The last one, the secondary shape ordering, is whenever you've got deformation that you want applied onto the geometry, but you want also the envelope to be taken in consideration. What you've got to do is look at it this way. XSI is going to look at the construction history, and it's going to calculate everything, you know, like from the bottom going up. That means that the first thing it's going to be calculating is the modeling, all of the deformations or the modifications that are done to the geometry. Then after that, it's going to calculate the shape, after that the animation, and the secondary shape authoring. It's just a, a good, clean way of getting all of the information to XSI so that it can give you, you know, like a proper result for your geometry. Okay. So why don't we go in and do four little examples just to show you how you're supposed to be working with the construction mode. So first of all, my little character that I've got here, I want to do a modification. I want to do a modification of the geometry. So I'm going to go down here where I've got the construction mode. They're localized under the toolbar. The first step that I've got is modeling. I can always access, you know, like the other ones down here, but for now I just want to do a modification of the geometry. So let's go under animate, and I want to get a property, and the property is going to be uh, the push tool, let's say. There you go. As soon as I do this, of course, the push tool is made active. I've got my little paintbrush, you know, that's going on top of my geometry. I'm just going to middle click to make the circle of influence a little bit bigger, and we're just going to paint on top of the nose like this of the character. Boom. So there you go. We end up, you know, with uh, Dr. Beck Bunsen, the clown of the uh, of the evening or something like that. But we're going to reduce his nose because we don't want it, you know, like to be that big. So let's just reduce it so that it's like this. So it looks a little bit more proper for a doctor like he is or more of an alchemist in this case. So if we look at the operator that was connected onto the geometry, we're going to see that under modeling, we now have the push operator that has been placed under the modeling. The next step, okay, well, we would like to do some enveloping of the character. If I switch this to the wireframe, you're going to notice that my character has three little bones in green that I want to use as deformers. So we're just going to keep the geometry selected, and we're going to say, okay, now I want to do some enveloping. The enveloping is going to be position under the animation, so I'm just going to click down here and switch this to animation. So there you go. Now under the animate, deform envelope, set envelope, I'm going to branch select the bone and all of the parts also that belongs to that hierarchy and I'm going to right mouse click. XSI does an automatic envelope assignation, so if we go back to the texture mode and I pick right down here, the select jaw, which is just a button, you know, to facilitate the uh, selection of the uh, jawbone. When I click on it, it gets selected, activate the little rotation, and as I rotate, you're going to notice that there's a deformation that is being done, but it's pretty extreme. I mean, it goes all the way up, you know, to the sculpt of the character. XSI did an automatic envelope. We can always go down here 
like in the weight panel to do some correction to the weighting or in this case to make this go a little bit faster I'm just gonna go and load up a preset that I've already done for the enveloping of the character there you go you can notice that everything has been reassigned to bone bone one and bone two as soon as I close this reselect the little jaw activate the rotation when I'm gonna move it ah, that's a lot better okay if we look down here, you're going to notice that under the animation placeholder, we now have the envelope operator. So everything is neatly placed, you know, like in the proper uh, storage s to give us, you know, like a good calculation of the geometry. Okay, now why don't we do this? Let's select the head. We're already in rotation and let's just make, you know, like a kind of a funky pose to our character where he's going to be looking up there. Oh, is that a plane that I'm looking at? Oh, I don't think so. Okay, so we're going to leave it like that. What I want to do now is some shape animation. We're just going to do a basic example just to show you how you would work with the construction mode in this regard. First of all, I'm going to minimize my viewport and I'm going to say, okay, it would be nice, you know, like for doing my shape animation to be able, you know, like to have as a reference, my original head, you know, like before I had all of these deformation. What you can do is that you can go in any of the viewports under construction mode display and instead of always getting, you know, like the result which comes, you know, like from the top of the construction history, you can go and sync with the current mode. Now watch this. I'm going to activate the sync. You've probably noticed down here that this has switched, you know, from result to animation. The other one down here stayed, you know, with result. Now, as I'm going to switch this to shape modeling, you're going to notice now that the geometry went back, you know, like to the default uh, orientation that it had under the modeling. And this is going to be, you know, like a lot easier for us to actually do our shape animation. This is really, you know, like a, a nice advantage that you get of working with the construction mode. And in the other window down here, you always see your end result, which is fine as well. All right, so let's look at this down here. I'm going to expand the little cluster and I'm going to select the left eyebrow. In the left eyebrow, you're going to notice that the, ver the vertices have become white to let me know that they all are part of a cluster. So I'm going to do uh, some uh, movements on my point. So I'm just going to press the letter M on my keyboard to activate the move point. And I already have the proportional mode that is uh, toggled on. I'm going to press R and I'm going to change the radius of influence of the proportional so that whenever I'm going to move a point, the others that are the neighbors will be moved as well. Okay, so let's go for the first shape and I'm going to say, okay, well, the first shape I'm going to do is maybe the surprise. So I'm going to say, okay, well, it's Dr. Beck Bunsen's birthday, so we're just going to go for a surprise look where he's going to say, oh, all my friends are here and I'm so happy. So there you go. That could be, you know, like the surprise look. So at frame two, we're going to go under shape and we're going to say that we want to apply the selected shape keys directly onto the mixer. So we're going to go for the safe shape key. So there you go. And we can give it, you know, like a friendly name, which is going to be surprise. There you go. Now, the next step is that Dr. Beck Bunsen realizes that there's absolutely no cake for his birthday. So he's going to be, you know, like really mad. So we're going to go for the mad look. Say, oh, man, how come there's no cake? And I just love chocolate. So let's go for the mad look. Then I'm going to switch to frame 20. And I'm just going to go shape, save shape key again. And we're going to call this one the mad look. So there you go. If I scrub the timeline, you're going to notice that I've got my two shapes that are changing, you know, like from the surprise to the mad. If I maximize my user viewport and we just get, you know, like a little bit closer to our character and we deselect them to see him, to see it more clearly, you're going to see that we're switching, you know, like from one shape to uh, the other one. Now, for those of you who have worked with shape in the past, you might be wondering, Eric, how come you didn't save, you know, like a neutral shape or you didn't save, you know, like a reference uh, shape key for your character? Well, I don't need to because the reference becomes actually the modeling that I've got underneath. Let's say, for example, the director passes by and says, Oh, Eric, uh, I would like you to change uh, the way that the character look. I was thinking about that last night and I would like him, you know, like to have bigger arcades on top of his eyes where we've got, you know, like the eyebrows. So we say, okay, well, no problem. What we're going to do is that we're going to switch back to modeling, like this, select a little character, press W to go back with our little paint tool, and we're just going to paint, you know, like these different parts right here. So there you go. Let's make them, you know, like really big. There you go. If I switch back to my character like this, 
and I just scrub the timeline, you can see that I still have my surprise and I go to my mad look and the deformation that I've added on top, you know, like it's still calculated. So the construction mode is really, you know, like a godsend tool for organizing, you know, like all of these elements. The last example I'm going to show you is with the secondary shape ordering. What if we want to do, you know, like more deformation, but we want them to be applied on top of the envelope? Okay, so why don't we do this? First of all, let's select our little character. Let's orbit to the side because I want to show you that when I'm going to select this little one here, uh, we call it bajou, but uh, in, that's a word in French. In English, it means uh, the cheeks on each side. So the cheeks that I've selected are right down here, all of the white vertices, and I've got the same thing on the other side. So what do I want to do now? I want to do some secondary shape altering as to when the mouth is going to be open, I want this you know, like to go a little bit onto the inside. So let's do it. Let's go under the construction mode. Let's switch this to secondary shape modeling. There you go. Now, the next step is that I'm going to switch to my wireframe. I already have my cluster selected. And I'm going to say under deform shape. I want to actually link deform with the orientation, my clusters, with the little bone that I've got right there. So let's go like this, right mouse click. So there you go. Now, let's go back to our little textured character because it looks a lot nicer. And what we're going to say now is that, okay, the position where they are at, I want this, you know, like to be when the mouth is fully closed. So let's close the mouth. Let's reselect those clusters. And let's just say that now I want to go under shape and I want to save a deform key. There you go. So this was done. Now the next step is let's reselect the jawbone and let's just, you know, like make it maximum like this. Reselect our little cluster and we're just going to go under scale and we're going to scale this, you know, like globally to bring them to the inside a little bit like this. And what we're going to see now is that we've got a move component that has just appeared under the secondary shape altering. Now the last step, of course, is to go under shape and save a deform key again. This is going to be my second one to bring the cheekbone a little bit onto the inside of the geometry. There you go. As soon as this is done, let's go back to the jawbone, a little rotation, and as I move my rotation, you can see that the cheekbone are going to the inside. And all the rest, you know, like gets properly propagated to all of the other operation. So, the in resume, if we look at the construction mode, the trick that I have in my mind whenever I'm working with this is that I see it as a mind reader. XSI wants to know what I'm about to do. If I'm about to do some modeling, I'm just going to switch down here to modeling. If I'm about to do some shapes, I'm going to switch to shape modeling. If I want to do my enveloping, I'm going to switch to the animation. Whatever other deformation that I want to add, you know, that needs to be calculated after the envelope, you just switch to secondary shape animation. This is really, you know, like a fantastic tool. Just get, you know, like the hang of it because it's going to be really, you know, like a time saver and it's going to give you excellent result every single time.